Okay, before all you whiners and crybabies start bitching about me wearing the same shirt today that I had on yesterday during update four, this is a privilege that you get when you retire. You can wear the same dirty clothes from day to day if you want to. And once in a while, that's just what I do. Okay? So, this is update number five. It's a short one, okay? Not a whole lot's going on. It's very quiet. He was very quiet last night. I mean, I went to bed about 9.30, and I didn't hear anything. Usually, on a Friday night, something wakes me up before midnight from this street right down here. Nothing last night. Slept like a baby. Curled up in the fetal position with my thumb in my mouth. So... I'm waiting for the motorcycle downstairs to get the hell off my street. Are you done now? Jesus. All right. Sorry. Uh, nice to see here. This is from the ACS Keto and State Gov. This is a, a an advisory or a report and message for U.S. citizens. Nationwide State of Emergency, January 12th, 2024. Yep, that was yesterday. Everything I get is a day old, okay? It's like my life, a day late and a dollar short. I'm not going to, the event, you know what the event is. It's about the emergency. The United States Embassy and Consulate in Ecuador will be closed on Monday, January 15th in observance of Martin Luther King Day. The embassy and consulate intend to send the next security update on January 16th, barring new information that would be of immediate use to U.S. citizens in Ecuador. Routine consular, consular appointments are scheduled to resume January 16th. If it becomes necessary to cancel scheduled appointments, applicants will be notified via their email address on record. Okay, the Ministry of Education has not yet determined whether Ecuadorian schools will return to in-person classes January 15th or remain online. So, you know, the whole purpose really of doing these updates is really kind of to keep you travelers that are coming here informed on what's going on. So maybe I'll kind of back off on all the local stuff, you know, because I think it's important for you to know those of you particularly that are traveling, either coming here from Canada, North America, or from another country here, okay? because there is some news related to that, okay? The government of Ecuador announced January 11th that during the state of emergency, all, now listen to this, okay, listen carefully. All foreign citizens entering the country via land border crossings with Colombia or Peru are required to present an apostilled certificate showing a lack of criminal record. So for you U.S. citizens, it sounds to me like you're going to have to have a current apostilled FBI background report. If you're in Colombia or Peru and you're trying to come back across the border on land, you're going to have to have that document. Okay? I'm going to put a link in the description to all of this stuff so you can go online because they say here, uh, see travel.state.gov for information on how to obtain a criminal record check and apostille from the United States, the U.S. Embassy and consulate in Ecuador cannot assist citizens crossing a land border in obtaining this required documentation, okay? So for those of you that have a laptop or a tablet and have the ability to get to the description of this video, that information is in there. For some people that are using strictly a mobile device, you may not have access to the description, or is it that you don't have access to the comments? I think that's what it is. I think you, you can see the description from a mobile phone, I believe, okay? The guidance provided in the travel advisory of June 22nd, 2023 remains valid. U.S. citizens, residents, and travelers should continue to exercise increased caution throughout the country should reconsider travel to areas marked as level three and should not travel to areas marked as level four in the advisory. U.S. citizens, and again, I'll put a link to this advisory in the description, okay? 
U.S. citizens should be aware that individuals not connected with criminal organizations may use the current conflict to commit crimes of opportunity. International airports in Quito and Waikil remain fully operational. However, carriers canceled some flights to and from the United States in recent and in coming days. Travelers should monitor their flight status closely and work to rebook with the same airline or another carrier. They say actions to take, okay? Read previous security alerts at ec.usmc.gov. I'll put that link in the description. Check your flight status for airports in Quito and Waikil. By the way, folks, for those of you that are coming to Monta, a lot of people don't have any trouble getting here coming through Panama City or Quito. Monitor ECU 911 for information on road closures. That's ECU 911 is basically about road closures here in the country. Track from official communications from government of Ecuador for additional information and updates to the state of updates to the state of emergency. Here's a good one. Follow credible media sources for accurate information on current threats and violent activity. Monitor the Facebook pages that I put in the description, okay? Review, review the travel advisory and safety security information for Ecuador at travel.state.gov. That link will be in the description as well. Enroll in Smart Traveler. That's the STEP program. I've done a couple videos about this. And, and I'll tell you what, folks, as a courtesy, because I love you so much, okay? I'm going to put the U.S. Embassy Quito and the U.S. Consulate General Waikil telephone numbers and, yeah, telephone numbers and their uh, email address in the description, okay? Just to show you that my heart's in the right place. Now I have some handwritten notes here. Government has suspended electric, oh, this is a government. The government has suspended all the electrical rationing, the electricity rationing, until February 29th. As many of you may or may not know, we are un we're going through electricity rationing where they cut the power off at various areas throughout the country for an hour to three hours. We were getting it every single day up until uh, the 1st of December, I believe. And what a pain in the ass that has been. I will put a link in the description about that information. The FCDO in the UK recommends avoiding non-essential travel to a significant portion of Ecuador, particularly the coastal regions. In Quito, military and armed vehicles walked through the streets after new attacks. So apparently, they had some new attacks last night, and so now they're uh, diligently traveling slowly through the streets. And let's see here. Three nature reserves are closed until further notice. Schools and colleges will remain on virtual classes until January 17th. Now, it's my understanding that they're not saying that they're going to resume classes on January 17th. They're saying they're going to remain virtual until January 17th, and then there'll be further notices about whether it'll be continued or suspended. Okay, so that's it for update number five. It's really, it's been very quiet here. I have not heard of any, nothing, no bombs, no nothing. I mean, it's hardly... There's very few people out. Um, it's just been so peacefully quiet. I just, I just love it. Look at this. Look at that. It's, it's a beautiful day. Clear blue skies. And the water just looks nice and clean and blue. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Okay? I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.